So one of the biggest mistakes, I talk about it in the book, you touched upon it, and that's why I wanted to elaborate on it, is people holding on to great music that they're making. Yes. Instead of putting it out, instead of selling it, there's a lot of times that people, you'll be able to get to the people you want to work with if you put it out on your own. The more you put content out, the more people can get exposed to you, yeah. the more people can understand that you might be somebody they want to work with. Yes. Like you said yourself, you've had songs that sat in your laptop that you thought was a hit, and then you sat on it waiting for the right thing, never happened, and it just wasted the record. Yes. And that's a big mistake a lot of songwriters a make. Lot of, a lot of songwriters make. And then I just... And producers. And producers. And, and artists. I feel like in the new music business, it's not about the megastar. You know what I mean? I mean, like, yo, I'm not going to lie, bro. The kids, the kid in your basement recording today in the new music business, and this is no disrespect because he's a megastar, is just as important as Justin Bieber. Back then, bro, we would have records for celebrities and be like, uh uh, this is for Rihanna, and I'm, she got to sing it. And that's the way the business went, and it made sense. But I really feel. Like, expect with streaming and whole music going, yo, man, you have just as much of a chance to be number one being in your basement right. with the next door neighbor right. than, oh, yeah, Justin Bieber going to sing my song. That's right. just the new music business to right. me. Right, because as you said, one of the records you did for Lizzo, was it Juice? Yes. Juice was one of the most synced records this year. Yeah, one of the yeah. most synced records last year. And, and what people don't understand is what syncing means is a song that you hear like in a TV show, in a movie, whether it's in the background, whether, yeah. it's, whether it's a theme song. That is what you call syncing your music, for those that are unfamiliar with that. And you can make tremendous money just making sync music, even if it never even gets on the radio. Even if it never gets on the radio. And, and, and the funny part is I, late, I learned this late. I learned this with juice mm -hmm. like you know like wait how much money are we making right yeah but it didn't oh wow like right. you know and i just feel like there's so many ways you can make music and make money make money make money as a musician now it's like yo man it, it, the door is wide open i feel like it's a great time to be a musician and it's a great time to not be afraid to putting music out. I mean like literally like, yo, I, right, hey Steve, sing this for me. I'm about to load it up on Spotify tomorrow. Right. What? Hey. And then guess what could happen? Uh, a music supervisor or someone's just trolling through the internet, find your song like, man, this would be great for this video game or for this movie. And like, that will never happen if you don't put your music out. If you just sit there hoping that, you know, you got the right marketing plan, you got the right artist singing it, you got a record deal. You don't need all that stuff to just get your creativity and your music out there. And there's a lot of money to be made out there for that. And def that's why, man, you know, stop bodyguarding the music, you know. We, we, you know, even this is my message to the music business. We got to stop bodyguarding the music. We have to let the people hear the music, let the music build, let the music, be, let the music be hard. You know, sitting down like, oh, man. We gotta make sure we have the perfect right song and the setup single and the, and the this and that. I remember um, P in an interview saying when he put out the um, City Girls project, Act Up was on the album mm -hmm. and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. it, they put out the whole project, Act Up been there the whole time right. and nobody was paying attention. And then they put out the song with Cardi B and everybody was like, oh, Cardi B and the City Girls and da 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 da. And then people went back. Right. And then Act Up started to grow and everybody's like, yo, this song is amazing. And it's like, yo, we put this out like a year ago. This song right. been, you know, this song been there. Right. But, they, but guess what? They wouldn't have been able to seize that moment if the music was on a hard drive on a computer that only seven people in the studio could listen to and be like, yo, this is hard. Right. You know, stop self-proclaiming your song success. The only way you're going to know if your song is successful is to... Put it out into the world. Right, and stop thinking because you made something six months ago, a year ago, two, three years ago, that it's old, that you can't put it out now, or that there's still opportunities. There's records, look at bands like Fun. When they put out We Are Young, Yo. they thought that was their hit. They put it out, nothing happened. Then a year later, it gets synced in a, in a Budweiser commercial. Or it gets on Glee. You know what I mean? It gets on a TV show. And then all of a sudden, the song becomes a Grammy record. You know, Imagine Dragons. Like, there's a lot of people that were putting out music it didn't pop off at first, it goes back to patience. 
And it goes back to understanding that there's so, many, there's so much out there that it might take a little bit more time to be discovered. But you'll never be discovered if you don't put the music out. If you was the only person listening to your music in your living room with your, with your mom and your cousins, my boy, you, right. you, you ain't gonna get what you're trying to get. Just put it out. There's a whole nother video about how to market it and how to get people aware of it. But let's talk about the importance of collaborating as a songwriter. Man, I think the best music is made by collaborating. The best music is made in chaos sometimes. You know, some of the best walking relationships are relationships of people who is like, they didn't even like each other. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of way? So um, a lot of the times as creative people, we feel like we need the perfect circumstance. It's like the temperature isn't right. I need the lighting and I need candles and I need and I need this exact strain of weed. And we've both seen weed. that. <laughs> and I've seen that and then nothing comes out of it. Right. And then you and then sometimes I've been in a studio where I've been walking with somebody who've pushed my talent to a place that I never thought I would even go because mm. I so used to walking this way and I was like, yo, I don't like this dude's process and da 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 and it's like, oh shit. And I write a hit right. because I embraced a new way of thinking. And, and you're it, open-minded. And there's no, listen, I know so many songwriters. Yo, I've written hit records by myself. Right. Um, I've written, um, I know songwriters who've written hit records by themselves. But all the songwriters who've been around for decades at a time, you know, producers, songwriters, people that I admire, Dr. Dre, Timbaland, Quincy Jones, Pharrell. Hmm. Yo, these guys don't have a problem or feel a way with other, like, I got the drums from him. I got the keyboard sample from him, the vocals from her. Mm -hmm. It was his idea to say whatever, the word whatever was, that yeah. word was. Did, oh man, that's like eight people. But did we write a hit though? Right. You know, you know, at the end of the day, there's music which we all love, all creative artists we love, we would do for free, we've done for free a lot. Mm -hmm. And then there's wait, the- Wait, what'd you just say? We did what a lot? We've done for free a lot. And then there's the music business. Right. The business where, yo, we in here to make money, yes, to make art, but to hopefully make art that we could take care of our families and take care of our lives with. Going back to Quincy Jones, you know, who I'm a big fan of, he say, leave your art on the wall mm -hmm. and give the people what they want. Right. And if you are going to make art for people to consume, you have to know that it, it's not about you. Right. The, it's not about, once, one, once, the, once the product leaves you, and I wrote this, once it gets out there, it is not about it's you. It's about you having the best way of giving the people what they want. And, and being in a group, being in a room with somebody that could say, yo, if you just change the melody there a little bit, um, okay, locked away. I've watched hit records happen just from changing one melody in the bridge. What, yo, lo lo locked away was full song. My manager Ray came in and he was like, yo, this song is cool. You know why, you know what the problem is? These verses are whack. Mm -hmm. Luke was like, you know something? Let you yeah. Cause this chorus is good. Let's try new verses. And we tried new verses. And that song probably take us a month before we were like, finally, right. this is good. This right. is before we could get get Adam to sing it like, literally. Yes. Right. We like this song. Right. So you know, but without collaboration, and collaboration could come from anywhere. Co collaboration could come from going home and playing it for your girlfriend and her being like, that's not, I don't like that. Right. And you're like, why? Why you sound like that? So listen to everybody. Yeah, I mean, listen, to e right. listen to everything and, and, then, and then boil down. And collaboration is really taking all the opinions and making one complete thing and being able to respect everyone's process and gain in the room, you know? There are some people that ha don't collaborate because they may not be good with people and they're still successful. I don't want, 
I don't want you guys to see this and feel like, well, if I don't collaborate, I won't be Just a don't big be closed mind to collaborate. Don't be closed minded to working with other people because other people may give you a new perspective that adds to your greatness. Right, right, yes. right, right. And, and making somebody else great is in fact being great. Yo, there's not, yo, I feel like being talented and being knowledgeable and knowing things and not giving the information to people mm -hmm. and not giving the energy to people is a waste of talent. Totally. Yeah. That's why we're here helping, <laughs> us, helping Exactly. You. So speaking of collaborating, there's a lot of artists and it's a tough thing to talk about, but you know, you have somebody in the room that might throw one word out, right? Mm -hmm. Or one line. And now you're like, man, how much publishing does he get of this song? How do we split this song up? And I've even seen, I'm sure you have, people tell you, oh, I don't want to hear your opinion because they don't want to share in the credit of this song. How do you address that? And how do you determine and decide who gets what and how much of a song when collaborating with other people? Okay, this is wh what I'm going to say. Um, there's, a man there's many di different ways to do it. You could use your own discretion on how you like to do it. Um, I could give give you a couple ways that I have found ha that has been easy for me. I don't have, where I don't have publishing disputes. Um, usually with a song, a song is broken down into 100%. The producer, um, creator of the music yeah. would have 50% of the song and the lyric and melody person would have 50% of the song. So if you made the beat, I would be like, okay, 50% of the song goes to you. Now 50% is me. I brought in other writers. So this 50%, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try, you know, I wouldn't jump into your 50. This is one way to do it. Um, and I break it down 20%. I give 20% to the chorus, mm -hmm. which is the most important part of any song. Right. You know, and then I do 10% per verse. Usually in the traditional sense of a song, you'd have three verses, including a bridge. First verse, second verse, and then a bridge. So if I wrote the hook, 20% is mine, and then this guy wrote a verse, another guy, you know, and everybody yeah. get 10%. I could, I would break it down, I would break it down like that. I have to make it easier, and people have found that to be fair. Right. And another way you could is if we all agree to collectively come in and write this song, we split it evenly. Right. Producer, writer, everybody, so if four people do it together, everybody get 25. If two people do it together, 50-50. So it's no argument because maybe I was like, yo, those chords could be better. You should try tung tung tung. Yeah, yeah. I didn't play it, but right. then, and maybe you were like, yo. If you said this instead I, of that. We found love in a happy place. It's cool, but a hopeless place. With, you know, yeah. that's what collaboration is. And in that sense, Without each other, we won't have this song. So even if your contribution was small, take out your contribution, we don't have the this complete, complete song. Not saying we wouldn't have been able to finish it. So, you know, it all depends. Now, you use your discretion because you may work with people. You come in a room with certain writers and stuff like that, and they really don't bring things to the table. They're more like, finessers they just come in a room and they yeah yeah that's dope that's yeah dope. And, they, 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 and they find a way and then it's like yo bro i helped out like i told and then you're like you know what i is the type of person to be like you know what me I'm gonna fight with you you can have the percent but i will never work with you again right and now it's like you just kind of mess up sort of a relationship by not coming in and doing the work so do you think it'd be better if that person you're talking about was like you know what i didn't really contribute that much Let's bump me down to like five percent. Yes, I, yeah. I feel. Listen, fair business keeps you around longer. It, true story. I did a song. I will. Ne I ain't gonna mention a name. I just. I ain't gonna even mention a song. I did a song with a producer. Was it a hit? It was an album cut. It wasn't even a hit. Okay. And we were new songwriters. And you know songwriters don't necessarily get paid up front. Right. The producer will get paid. Right. And we were getting paid. All we wanted was $2,500. Because we didn't have no deal. We didn't have nothing. And this was how we was paying our rent. Right. We wrote the song. We sold the song. We placed the song. We recorded the song in the studio. 
the producer was charging twenty thousand dollars we were like yo you think you could charge twenty two five and you know because the label the label didn't want to give us the money but right. yo dude you didn't do anything yeah. you didn't place it you d bro you s you didn't even know that i wrote the song to the beat you send me a beat pack and i came back to you like john is cutting it and it going on the album yeah. wow hey and i would have split the 20 grand with you guys no and guess what we d listen even when we talked to him it was like yo we don't want we don't want 50 percent we want twenty five hundred dollars okay. he's like yo my price is 20 grand okay ask him for 225 i'm not negotiating for you yeah but we said you know we took get you know what you're right and in business he was right you don't manage me you don't work for me my manager did reach out to everybody and they told us no so we came to you like, yo, we a team, we doing it together. Look, they told us no to this. So you do this and then you give us this and we cool. You know what? That's the last placement he ever had. Mm -hmm. That was in 2007. And you could have lifted him up as your songwriting career. As my mm -hmm. songwriting career, I'd have been like, yo, I always remember you looked out for me. Yeah. Got some more beats. Yo, you got some more tracks. Hey, I'm working on this project right now. But no. Yep. And and literally mess up a relationship for 25 yo dude you listen you you either when i got into the music business and okay when i make my first million dollars and i realized that you could make a million dollars doing this mm -hmm. i never fought over money was never an issue i never right. fight over money it was it be it wasn't about money anymore because i was like oh man I can, my kids are gonna go to good colleges, right, right. you know. My parents ain't have to work. My wife don't have to work. I go on fly vacation. Right, bro. I'll never argue with a man over pennies. So for those that are worried about money mm -hmm. and want to make money and aren't at your level yet, how does a songwriter go about? Because publishing is where you make your money. Yes. So how does a songwriter go about getting a publishing deal? Man, I mean, you know, you could reach out to publishers the, you know, like the internet is an amazing tool. Everything is available. I think continuous work and writing and building up your buzz, right. making noise, people hearing about you, studio hopping, people like, yo, this kid came in, he wrote something, yo, this kid is dope. Just know, you know, there's a bunch of people that would tell you, yo, pub deals are dumb. Don't do a pub deal. Yo, bro, bro. This is what I believe. Hey man, if you can afford to take care of your life and not do a pub deal and wait, wait. Yo, dog. But if you're trying to do music every day and somebody can come in and... My first pub deal, yes, I got a lot of money, but it wasn't the best terms. Mm -hmm. And by the way, every big time, every big fucking writer that I've met, first pub deal was shit. I don't care what nobody say. Everybody has signed a deal that they was like, now that I know better, I wouldn't have, those terms, I wouldn't have given them. I didn't know, you know, like. Well, that's record deal. That's every deal that a new artist gets into. And so for me, you know, I hear a lot of people, I hear a lot of people saying, don't sign a deal, don't sign a deal, fuck a deal, da, 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 da. Listen, if you have the balls and the kahunas to go out by yourself and do it cool yo my nigga if you got some dope boy if you got dope boy money you got four million dollars in drug money somewhere sitting that you could invest cool but if you are a nigga like me who worked at party city made minimum wage worked part-time had a number two at selling watches number two at selling watches mm -hmm. couldn't afford to catch the bus so i had to walk home if you're that guy fuck what these niggas is out here talking about get you a lawyer negotiate the best terms that you possibly can get you some money so you can focus on nothing else but your craft right get in the studio write records build your career take the time and the years and i promise you you're gonna get out of, and you're gonna you're gonna get out of that deal you're gonna move on and you it takes time right. going back 
to patience. Going talking about somebody like Dr. Dre who didn't get any of the NWA publishing when you saw in the movie he got fucked, came back fucking death row, left death row, said, keep all of it. I don't want nothing. Right. Came back with Eminem, 50 cents, and then a bam, third a third life because of patience, because of perseverance, because and of hard work. And believing in himself. And, and working hard. Yo, everybody asks me what's the number one key to becoming a successful songwriter. Confidence. It's nothing else. Hey, bruh. Te you know, all melodies and lyrics. No, and no, melody and lyrics and all of that shit. I really feel his opinion because, how, yo, bro, you know, th there's number one songs that I've heard that is trash to me. My opinion means shit. It's number one. So my thing is like me, you, 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 you know, hit records that you don't like, bro. There's songs on the radio that I'm riding in the car. My wife is like, oh my god, anybody could fucking make music. This is bullshit. Yeah. Everybody's gonna have a fucking opinion, mm -hmm. but whoever made that song, they believed it was good, and right. that's where it starts. If right. you don't believe it, if you don't fucking believe in yourself, bro, I promise you, nobody else will. You can't convince yo. It's like you gotta walk, bro. I walk into the room, and I don't. I have no doubts that I'm the shit. When I when I did, sorry, blame it on me with Akon. Yes, I I literally called him and said. Yo, I got a hit record for you. Wherever you are in the world right now, I'm coming to you. Where are you? Man, I'm on tour with Gwen Stefani. I was like, cool. I'm going to look up the schedule. I'm going to meet you at a city. See you soon. Hung up the phone. Yeah. Showed up backstage. He got off stage, walked over to me, and I said, I got a hit. I'm going to get on your tour bus right now until you record this song. That's how confident I am about this hit. So, yeah, testament to what you just said. And then look. And, and, and do, I, I don't want anybody to, uh, to mistake confidence with arrogance or being an asshole. Because there is a big difference. Because there are, like, I'll get hit from people all the time that say things like, man, I promise if you, like, listen to my, we're going to make a billion dollars together. I hate that. Yeah, and it's like, really, oh, bro? Let's Based go. on what? Just your opinion? Because mm -hmm. then, so how do you distinguish confidence from being cocky? It's an etiquette, you know? No disrespect. In St. Thomas, we would say something like, your mother's gun what raised wrong. Mm -hmm. You was raised wrong. Like, you got, you, should, you got a mama, you got a daddy. They should have taught you. There's a certain way you approach people. Bro, let me tell you something. People hit me in my DMs all the time. You know who I end up listening to their beats? The guy that hits me and says, yo, man, I'm a big fan, man. I look up to you, man. Yo, man, I mess with your music. Right. Oh, man, thanks. Hey, dog, I seen your post today, man. Sick, bro. Motivational. Bam. Oh, man. I didn't know you had kids, bro. That's cool. Bam. By the now, way, pause. Remember when I talked to you guys about people that you think won't respond on DMs? He's telling you right oh, now. Oh, I respond, he, to, I respond he, to everybody. I do, too. I respond yeah. to everybody. So, yeah. so, so, peep game. Now, this is what we call building a rapport. Next thing you know, he's like... Because you think as someone hitting him, you sent him 10 messages, he ain't never reading these. But he is, and he's like cataloging yeah like and then i'm like i'm like max money 26 i see this name so much that i'm like oh i remember this guy yeah. and then one day like months in now he's like yo man i just got a question you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm an aspiring producer and you have any advice for me like i'm i feel stuck i'm like yo keep that and i give him some advice he's like cool keeps going Next thing you know, me, and this has happened for real. Like, yo, we talking six, seven months, going into a year. He's like, yo, man, you would have never want to listen to my music. Would you just, like, give me some pointers? Yo, here's my email. Send it to me right now. Right. Bro, it's like, just to use this example. Bro, you don't meet a girl in a nightclub, walk up and be like, yo, so I'm going to get that pussy tonight or what? Who does that? That's rude, disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, bro, no, I'm just saying, and the people that do, do, does that, they're fucking dicks. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what do you do? You be like, hey, what's up? You take her out on a fucking date. You hang with her for a yeah. while. You, got her, you, make, you know what I'm saying? You talk to her. You get to know right, her, you right. know? And then it's like, now we get there. So right. all I'm saying is the same rapport because you got to think, this is what we do for, you got to respect this because, bro, this shit ain't a hobby. This shit ain't like, some side business that I just do for fun for no reason. 
this is my time away from my kids, my wife, my family, my mom. This so sacrifice. You, the sacrifice that I make. And no, you telling me, okay, Tehran, in my 24 hours a day, yo, can you take 10 minutes out of your day for me? Who the fuck are you? I don't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. What if you're a bad person? Yeah. What if you're disrespectful? What if you're rude? What if you're a deadbeat dad? What if you're a deadbeat dad? Yeah. But guess what? If we build a rapport and I get to know you, now it's like, yo, I fuck with this dude and I wanna help him because he's a good person, he's a good guy. Because that's one thing, I don't care how successful you are, how rich you are, if I get in a room and you're an asshole, I would be like, hey guys, you know what, I'm a bit tired today, I'm not on, I'm leaving. I'm gonna text my manager, I'm gonna say, fuck them, I'm never working with them again. And, then, and, you, can, and you can hit, you can hit, listen, my manager name is Ray Daniels. You can hit Ray Daniels every day. Mm -hmm. Yo man, I need to get in with Teron, man, what we gonna do? If you aren't a good person, I'm not doing it. Right. Because at the end of the day, if I write a hit with an asshole, I knew I just made an asshole rich. And all money does is enhance the, the fucked up part about you. And I, don't, and I don't want to help. <laughs> right. So if you're a good person, I know that a million dollars is going to enhance your good. You're going to help others like I helped you. So I don't want to... Anybody that's a fucked up person and did some weird shit, I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> so lastly... What is a common mistake you see songwriters making? Oh, man. Might, that might be a lot, huh? I mean, I see a lot of mistakes. I mean, shit, I make mistakes too, so I don't want to make, I don't... What have but, you learned from your mistakes? The biggest thing I learned is um, um, not to, 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 to hold on to records. If you mm -hmm. feel like you're talented, I promise you you're going to make more. Um, you know, collaborate and respect other people's process. You know, talented and creative people and artistic people are, are what would be considered the word weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm fucking weird. You might come in the studio and I might do shit that's like, yo, this guy is dancing around and he's loud and crazy and yeah. that might be my process. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I know, you know, and I like all the lights on, but yo, bro, you might like them dim and candles yeah. and you might just yeah. like, the, you know, I, you know, um, one of my favorite songwriters is Neo and I got the opportunity to work with him one time and it fascinated me, bro, because right. he pulled out a pencil and a pad and he wrote the song down right. and I was like, but I had to respect it. That's his process and it, right. it was cool. So, so learning how to respect people's process and and a mistake I feel like new songwriters make is new songwriters and producers man getting in with the getting in with the big songwriters and producers that don't mean it's going to change your life you know what I mean that doesn't I listen Max Martin the dream Rico Love Rock City other big song other big songwriters that's out there you know what I'm saying James Fauntleroy people that I admire and I love and are amazing yo not because Jane Fauntleroy wrote to your beat means that the song is gonna. Right. Yo, and just so you know, so I used to think when I was coming up that people bigger than me knew something that I didn't know. Right. People bigger than me was doing something that I couldn't do. Dog, name the biggest songwriter in the world with the biggest hit right now and your chances of placing a song is just as good as his. <laughs> you must have read the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> your chances are just, it's like, dog, you're like Rock City, man. Yo, I used to think like, you know, I like, let me think, Sean Garrett, The Dream, all the guys who are, mm -hmm. you know, all these guys who are big before I started to get a chance, I used to be like, Man, they're in the room, man. They're getting opportunities I'm not getting. Oh, man, I, I got to figure out how to get they there. They must be better than me. They must be better, dog. I got, I got to practice. And then you realize... And it wasn't, it's not the skill they're better at. It's presenting themselves the opportunity. Networking. Going yeah. out there, Reaching out. Yo, Delivering. Dog. Listen, bruh. Listen, bruh. Think on this. I can play a song for Selena Gomez right now, and she could be like, I'm Rock City, bro. I've proven myself, bro. Yeah. She's like, nah, that shit ain't hot, dog. And then... And it don't even mean it's not hot. It's just not hot for this project. Yeah, it's, it's not fit, It's fits. not for Selena. Let's, right. Yeah, let's not say it's not hot. And then you're in your basement, bro, and by some miraculous way, Mike Karen responds to you. You send him the song. He plays it for an A&R. Nobody at Atlantic could cut it, but the A&R... Yo, I've 
the a and r plays it for his friend they're like oh man selena could do this and now you have selena's first single and it's happened to a lot of people that way right. you're so it's not like oh i know max martin is better no bro you're gonna get in with max and he could teach you things you're gonna get in with me and i could teach you things but i promise you you could teach me things too right. and the funny part about being new the good part about being new is you haven't been tainted or jaded or affected by the music business process. Process. Yeah. So you're doing things, you're creating new ways to do things that I, I've been taught a way for the last 15 years of being in this business that I do it my way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean my way is right or wrong. It's worked for me. It may not work for you. You haven't been taught, so you're coming in a business green as fuck and you're like, Yo, why does the chorus have to come here? I'm gonna put the chorus here right. and the verse here, and I'm gonna pull the beat out right here. Right. Or I'm gonna have no chorus. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck a hook. And you're like, and I'm like, bro, what are you doing? That can never be a hit with. And then chorus. it's a hit. <laughs> yeah, because and and so so I say being new and being because now you're in the room and you're creative and and there's nobody there to tell you this is how it's supposed to be. No, it's like, yo, bro, you yo. A stylist, they come in and say, yo, where it is and da 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 Yeah, but before before that, you're in the room just putting clothes together right, and, right. and you come up with some shit that's like, yo, why you put those socks with those shoes, bro? That's crazy. Right. And that's how it happens. You know, a lot of the times, ignorance can bring forth great mistakes. Right. There are such there there are such there is a such thing as a good mistake. So you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes, learn from them, grow. And again, as a songwriter, please, man, yo, have confidence in yourself, believe in yourself, and don't fucking think that getting to me or getting to anybody that you look up to is gonna be the key to change your life. I mean, only you can do that. And lastly, do not think just because somebody's more successful than you that they're better than you. For a fact, they're not. Get familiar.